is Lauren Hill did a email interview. <laughs> Wow. Uh, for Rolling Stone's top 500 albums. And she spoke about why exactly she hasn't recorded a new studio album since The Miseducation. <clears throat> As you may recall, The Miseducation was a huge, huge debut album for Lauren. Despite her huge success with the Fugees, this debut album for her was incredible. But it was the last time that we got a studio album. Of course, we got the live MTV album uh, that she did, that, that live album, which I still love. Uh, but she hasn't recorded a full studio album in such a long time. So in this new interview, a podcast interview that she did with um, Rolling Stone, she reveals that her label, and this is what she said, the wild thing is no one from my label has ever called me and asked how we can help you make another album. Ever. Ever. Did I say ever? Ever. Ever. This is what she's saying. But she talked a little bit about the miseducation. And as you know, the miseducation it was such a huge success for her. However, um, she reveals with the mis- miseducation, there was no precedent. I was, for the most part, free to explore, experiment, and express. After the miseducation, there were scores of uh, tentacled obstructionists, politics, repressing agendas, unrealistic expectations, and saboteurs everywhere in bold. People had included me in their own narratives of their successes as it pertained to my album. And if this contradicted my experience, I was considered an enemy. And I think she's alluding to uh, all the lawsuits that she faced after the miseducation where people said that they were not properly credited or compensated for their involvement in the miseducation. And I'm not sure if that's true. We have heard stories in recent years of Lauren not paying people, including the government, which she served time for. Um, So I'm not sure if I don't believe that, but I know that after those lawsuits, her creativity and her want to make new music really diminished. She also says in the interview in regards to uh, what she just, you know, what the album's legacy is. She says, I've always been critical. I've been pretty critical of myself artistically. So, of course, there are things I hear that could have been done differently. But the love in the album, the passion, its intention is to me undeniable. I think my intention was simply to make something that made my foremothers and forefathers in music and social and political struggle know that someone received what they'd sacrificed to give us and to let my peers know that we could walk in that truth proudly and confidently. She also added, at the time, I felt like it was my duty or responsibility to do so. I challenged the norm and introduced a new standard. I believe the miseducation did that, and I believe I still do this, defy convention when the convention is questionable. I mean... You can't deny. I mean, she could still... She's been touring off this one album for like 25 years. I mean, it's still one of my favorite albums, but I can reveal this story. I don't think a lot of people know this. When I bought The Miseducation, I literally literally was going to return it. I was like, ugh, I don't know if I like this. I was going to return it. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, I was like, oh my God, I love this album. <laughs> but I... I that- 